you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Moveville University, Pure Cairo Notes, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Traction System, MedZone, Vantage Point Marketing, and Imaging Services. Let's hustle. Hey guys, uh, Jim Chester here. I got Jeff Bruner here. Um, he's over on the eastern slope of the state. I'm on the western slope. I'm uh, in uh, Grand Junction, which is the Grand Valley of Colorado, uh, which I like to say where no one lives. He's over there in Aurora, where I I, I moved from because everybody's over there. <laughs> There's too many people living here. <laughs> So we're going to talk all things uh, Palmer. We're going to talk all things rugby, and we're going to talk about the Rugby Alumni Symposium. Then I'm going to get an early close on them right here. Um, there, that's April 13th and 14th at the Fountainhead, Davenport, Iowa. So if you guys are interested in hearing some of the premier speakers in chiropractic, um, get you, punch your ticket to come see us in Davenport, Iowa. Um, Dr. Jeff, man, thanks for uh, joining me today. Glad to be here. Yeah, man, we, we, we've pretty much uh, talked for an hour without you guys knowing about it, but here we are live. Uh, I got the old boys uh, logo over that shoulder there. You said you played in one game with those guys? I did, yeah, up at Saranac Lake, uh, the championship match. Unfortunately, we, we did not win, but um, but it was a good time. But, you know, going on the pitch isn't always about winning and losing, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, it's about it's about the the brotherhood that you make. Or now we have scholarships for women. It's about the sisterhood they make. But it's more about the rugby family and Palmer Rugby is a huge family. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And you know, honestly, Palmer Rugby took me under their wing about ten years ago, and I don't. I would have not been who I am today without this. Uh, this emblem and without Palmer Rugby entrusting in me to learn about chiropractic, to be the journalist, to tell the story time and time again. And now we have Cairo Hustle, which is uh, behind me. And uh, we, we have a brand now that tells chiropractic message every day. And uh, we we've, we would have had three today. Um, Anthony P Piana would have been our third today, but he wasn't feeling well. So um, we're rescheduling him. But uh uh, we had Lally uh, earlier, Kelly Lally. Um, she she's great. Gave a great uh, interview about women's rugby and how all that started to really catch momentum after 2012, and now we're here 2018, and now we have 10 scholarships going towards women's rugby, um, which is pretty amazing, ma'am. Right, right. And my daughter, who grew up as a dancer for 17 years, is the president of the Palmer College Women's Rugby program right now. So. Uh, it's it's amazing to see her transition from dancing to smashing people on the pitch, but <laughs> I love it. Awesome. So, so so let's talk a little bit about um, how you got into chiropractic and why 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 you're a chiropractor after 26 years. Sure. Well, the short story is is that I suck at math. Um, <laughs> I I thought I was going to be an optometrist, and I was having a real difficult time with uh, even the the very basic advanced math. Um, I grew up in a very allopathic family. Uh, I did notice during the five years that I got four allergy shots every single Monday uh, from fifth through 10th grade that when we drove by these chiropractic offices on the way to the allergist, um, they were always busy and bustling, lots of happy people coming and going. And I did ask my mom one time when I was about sixth grade, so what's a chiropractor? And I got the standard, you know, oh, they're quacks, they paralyze people, they kill people. And, and you know, even in my young mind, I'm going, well, those people look pretty happy you know, to be going and getting paralyzed and killed over there. So, but I just, I just let it, you know, I figure, well, mom said, so that's true. Uh, fast forward, I'm in a chemistry class, true freshman kid, I'm studying chemistry. And I, I asked him what his major was. And he said he was pre-chiropractic. And I started laughing at him. I called him a quack. And he said, you've been misinformed. And the next thing he said changed my life. He said, chiropractic is about adjusting the spine to remove interference to the nervous system so the body can heal and grow the way God meant it to. And when he said that, I looked at him and I was just that aha moment. I said, that makes more sense than anything I've ever heard in my life. I said, well, tell me some more. So he told me a little bit more. And then I said, well, here's, 
here's a $64,000 question. How much math is required to go to chiropractic school? And uh, he goes college algebra. And I said, oh, I got that six years ago. I was kind of on the forever undergraduate plan. Uh, I would still be in an in undergraduate if I could get away with it because, you know, it was a lot of fun. But um, so then the kicker was I checked into some schools and this was back before the Internet, of course. And uh, I get information back from Palmer and Life and they said they had rugby scholarships. I'm thinking there's no way this is right. So I called and I was connected to the coach at the time was Jonathan McKeever, a South African gentleman. And uh, I started telling him I had rugby experience. I had captained the Kansas State side. Um, we had been ranked in the top 10 in the nation, finished in the top eight one year. And uh, and as soon as I started telling him my experience, he says, how soon could you get you? And um, <laughs> I, said, well, I got a good, uh, you know, probably year and a half to get my prerequisites. And he says, no, 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 we've got a, a community college here. We can get you in. And, you know, it's especially accelerated for Palma and you can play rugby while you're going there. And before I knew it on that phone call, he had told his roommate to pre-register me at Scott Community College. So um, that was in probably October of 85. And in 80, January of 86, I moved uh, myself and my wife at the time and my uh, 14-month-old son to Davenport, Iowa. I literally had never been adjusted, but it just made that much sense. And as soon as I got to town, I got a student doc and I started getting adjusted and you know, my, my health, my rugby performance, everything just, it, it just excelled beyond my imagination during that time. So um, first generation chiropractor, anybody out there that uh, is that, you know, we, we know it's a struggle. Our families don't understand. Um, my mother's having a hip replaced next month because she misstepped off a ladder a year ago and still has not been adjusted other than when I've made it back to adjust her. Um, <clears throat> won't let anybody else touch her, that type of thing. So, um, you know, it's not easy being, being the pioneer, but um, uh, when it's good and true and right, it's simple. You know, you, you know, you're doing the right thing. So you just weather everything else. And rugby is a good metaphor for that. Um, you know how many times I've just felt like, well, I just got to ruck over this, just just like I do on the pitch. So that's that's the story of how I got into it, and um, obviously my daughter being there now, um, you know, she's an example of what happens when a child is receiving chiropractic care pre insemination. <laughs> so literally during her gestation, and uh, I checked her while she was still attached to the umbilical cord. Um, and, uh, she didn't need an adjustment until she was about 18 days old. Um, but, uh, yeah. And now she's going strong. So, uh, never look back and love helping my patients. Um, I have helped a few other folks on to becoming chiropractors, patients, uh, other K-State rugby players. I think there was two more guys that went from K-State rugby to Palmer and, um, Dr. Daryl Loader and Dr. Steve Robke. Um, Robke was quite prolific when he was there. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's my uh, my historical <laughs> story of how I got into it. So Chelsea goes ahead and uh, says, "Heck yes, I am." <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, you yeah. know the, the cool thing is is uh, what I've learned from Palmer is uh, there's so much support. And, and there's so much support, it almost makes a tear come down everyone's face. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's like the the, the concept of uh, family is there's so much love for each other that it supersedes chiropractic, it supersedes rugby, and it's just a big family. And uh, that's what I found the most out of uh, the, the rugby people. And um, being a part of that tribe for 10 years, I've seen the type of people it produced. And I've seen the frontiersmen and the frontierswomen that it's uh, – it's brought into the creation for the chiropractic profession. And I've seen that type of, uh, you know, that I don't care what you guys as a, as a country say about my profession. What I do is I adjust, I remove the subluxation, I allow the innate to flow, and I bring the, I restore the body back to optimal function. And that's like you said, when you first heard that from that, that, 
pre Cairo kid or the pre Cairo guy. Like it makes sense when you when you think about what chiropractic really is. You it makes sense to people, but it's it's become uh, vilified and the dogma that surrounds it um, never really supported the profession. Not even since day one. It's always had a black guy in the profession. And now we're starting to realize that the drugs and surgery game isn't the answer. It's really the chiropractic adjustment that will set people free. And so, so someone was chatting with me before our interview, and they asked me, um, I want to know more about your career. I want to know more about you. I go, well, chiropractic is my muse, and I've learned how to speak the language. And that's what sets me apart from everybody else out there. There's all these people that want to, uh, you know, bang their own drum and support it. But I'm not taken from the back of chiropractic. I'm helping pave the road for the future of this profession. And that's why the dogma that existed before isn't going to exist anymore because we're talking a new chiropractic language. And that's mm-hmm. one that's one of innate potential. That's one of subluxation-based chiropractic. And that's one of chiropractic brotherhood and family that really serves humanity. Absolutely. And, you know, medicine would say, well, your evidence is anecdotal. And I I always tell people, I'd rather ask real live people that have experienced the miracle of chiropractic than to depend on half dead guinea pigs and rats in some lab somewhere that, you know, it's just the scientific, even that is starting to be questioned. What is scientific and, you know, how has that been uh, you know, bribed and, and, and changed over the years to, to make these things seem scientific when they actually aren't. And chiropractic is, is extremely scientific. It's, it's so simple, you know, um, get your foot off the garden hose is how my wife explains it to people. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. So, so, so Christian here, Christian Esteban is a good friend of mine. Uh, he helps me, he helps me do some marketing for chiropractic. And uh, he says more and more people nowadays are finding out chiropractic actually works thanks to people like you guys. Thank and you. I, I think that that's a huge honor when we have non chiros here on this feed and they, they are learning about chiropractic from the ultimate source, which is passion, which is, you know, a time tested uh, story. And I think that that's the thing that chiropractic is, is it's a story. And the person I always tell people this, Dr. Jeff, the person that's the most viable in the room is the one with the best story. It's not the one with the most money or the biggest car the, or the, the biggest house or the fastest car. It's the one that has the best story. And the chiropractic is one of the best stories to ever be told. And it's one of the best stories that you can actually practice and be a doctor of. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, out of the mouths of babes, I had a a three-year-old patient uh, a few weeks ago, scared to death to get her first adjustment. She came in yesterday and her mother was laughing and she said um, that Brooklyn had said, I like him. He healed me. <laughs> and so even this three-year-old, you know, uh, understood that what I did helped her to feel better. And um, I, that those are the things that just get you going. And um, when you can help the kids especially because um, they are the future. I mean, it's a cliche, but it's true. You know? I mean, it's, it's not going to change. And the more that we have influence on the future generation of chiropractors, the more that we're going to have better leaders. And yeah. I think that that's what people are learning from these talks, man. They're learning from these interviews is, you know what, what we're doing is right. Because, because now we, we, we are learning from each other. And before we were little islands that were wondering how to succeed. And now we're more of a unified front because we're telling the story. And if I've heard one thing over and over and over, Dr. Jeff, is tell the story. Right. And that's what we're doing now. And we get the opportunity to do this every day. And Dan Golden um, says, I certainly appreciate Dr. Bruner's frustration with family and friends' opinion of chiropractic. Bottom line is, if chiropractic didn't work, it wouldn't be here. Keep on keeping on, Dr. Bruner. <laughs> Absolutely right. You got to love the logic. Obviously, the man who gets adjusted, um, you know, quite often when you encounter folks in this time in, in history that just boggle the mind is to, what are they doing? What are they thinking? My daughter and I, you know, it's always the, well, we got to, we got to give them some slack because they're probably subluxated and on drugs. And, uh, and I don't mean recreational drugs. I mean, prescribed drugs and, uh, you know, the, the, the notepad drugs. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I, a lot of BJ's old, uh, you know, comments come to mind and, 
what you had said about it being right and true. You know, his last written words, he's basically said that, that God has always perpetuated that which is good and true, and chiropractic is no exception to that rule. And, um, you know, he knew that it would continue on despite uh, all the opposition because it is good and true, and it's logical, and the results speak for themselves. And, um, you know, you can put all the fake news against us you want, people try it, they realize how much it helps them. So, well, it's, it's dogmatic opposition because they don't want to know that there's something out there that can save people money and it can make people healthy. And when it comes to like the bottom dollar of like a a marketplace, they don't want to support something that provides natural health. Right. Health. There's no, no profit in keeping someone healthy. You got to make them sick and then treat their illness. So Mm -hmm. uh, I did see one of the big opioid manufacturers is, working hard on a drug to counteract the effects of opioid addiction. So you know, they created the problem and now they're going to create the solution. Yeah, convenient. Well, um, I, ha- I have a lot of behind the doors conversations on this topic. And if the chiropractor doesn't step up with high self-esteem and realize that they're the answer for the opioid addiction and start taking care of the people and, and proving to themselves um, that that they are the solution for this this huge massive problem in this country and you know globally, um, you know the chiropractor is the answer. But the chiropractor has to get their their positioning proper in order to take over this position to be the answer. Which and, is, in my opinion, where where rugby comes in very handy because um, <clears throat> if you have participated in the sport of rugby and understand you know, that, that feeling of overcoming odds, even when you're, you're, you're beaten down, um, you know, it, it just, it's a metaphor for what it's like to actually be a chiropractor and face this constant opposition, but know you're right and be bold and continue to, um, you know, throw forearms for, for chiropractic and, uh, and, and just keep rucking on over whatever gets in your way because you stand for truth and, uh, and you help people and, and even folks like you that haven't played rugby, but you have that same drive, you know, and you're doing it journalistically, which has the ability to reach, you know, far more people than I'm going to just on a day by day basis in my clinic. And I don't know if you knew this, but my undergraduate degree is actually in journalism and mass communications. Um, <clears throat> I was an advertising major. I was I was going to write ad copy for a living, I thought, till I realized that I would be a professional liar for the most part. So that wasn't going to work for me. So, uh, you know, that's what led to the optometry and then eventually to the chiropractic. Uh, Well, I I was originally going to be a sports journalist. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) So it came quite easy for me to like start learning about what Matt Walker was teaching me about rugby. And then I, I was like, huh, well, chiropractic is bigger than rugby, in my opinion. So then I, I became, you know, clinically trained to be a technician in his practice. And then as I was telling you, I, I said, he, he actually he sat down one day and he had a quite, he had an injury similar to your, not similar to yours, but he, he tore his knee up playing rugby at Palmer. And uh, he sat me down one day and he's like, Jim, what do you want to do with your life? And we're sitting there watching football, NFL football, and I think we're eating lasagna. He made homemade lasagna. We're eating lasagna. And we're sitting there on his couch together. Um, and he's like, what do you want to do with your life? I go, you know what, man, I want to be a documentary filmmaker. And he goes, I'm going to see to it that that happens for you. And so, the- and now look at it like yeah. b- because of our support of each other, I am now a megaphone for chiropractic. And the first real film that I made was on the, the profession of chiropractic. Yep. Excellent film as well. Yes. And, um, so here we are today. <laughs> We need, you know, this is exactly what we need is the independent because the mainstream isn't going to, they're, they're never going to champion us <clears throat> unless we're spending billions on, you know, commercials on their, on their TV stations or whatnot. So, and then you already bought. Exactly. Exactly. And so, then they're going to stymie the truth out of you. Anyway. And then they're going to then, then they're gonna say, well, why don't we make chiropractic more medical? Right. Right. And then you're going to say, well, that, that, that's not our history. We're not medical. We're not medicine. We are chiropractors. We heal people with our hands. There's a huge, there's a huge discourse between what you want and what we are. Exactly. Our, our identity is we're, we're doctors of our hands. We study the x-ray. Um, we use thermography. Like you, you even use an instrument. You use uh, torque release technique. Like there's certain things 
that if you see the results and you see that the body starts healing, then that's something you stick with and that's what you do. And that's what we call chiropractic. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's, um, it's humbling. I even, I even told my daughter when I, I said, are you sure this is the path you want to take? And she said, yes. And I said, you got to realize we are still pioneers. I mean, yes, we're 125 uh, plus years old, but um, that's still pretty young. And um, pioneers never have it easy because they face all kinds of opposition until all of a sudden one day people go, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know? <laughs> and then it becomes common sense. But until that time, uh, it, it's, a, it's an uphill battle. And um, there's opportunities to, to sell out and, um, you know, just, just get into the routine of just doing it for the paycheck. Uh, fortunately, I've, I've resisted those temptations over the years. And, um, you know, I just love telling the truth to people and letting the chips fall where they may then. So. You've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo. Cairo Sushi. Barbara Eaton's 56-day chiropractic boot camp. Muvo University. Pure Cairo Notes, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Traction System, MedZone, Vantage Point Marketing, and Imaging Services. Let's hustle. Well, you always have to go back to the adjustment. Absolutely. If you, if you, if you learn how to be a good adjuster, you can sell the adjustment until your hands fall off. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the tools are always with you. So that just made me think of Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's reel this back to uh, chiropractic and rugby. Gotcha. Um, you, you had um, an opportunity to go to Palmer and play rugby. You were, you had past experience as being a rugby player, as you mentioned. You played at Kansas State, and okay. then you came into Palmer. Um, what was it like in the early stages, and how was that? Uh, maybe there were some moments where it didn't look like the, the program was going to survive. Yeah, it was tough. We um, we were caught with the uh, on the tail end of Palmer being forced to start playing in the in the club division instead of collegiate. And then um, the school decided to switch from the quarter system to the trimesters that they're presently using. During that time, the enrollment at the school dropped considerably. I think people, they didn't want to start on quarters and have to be transitioned into uh, to the trimesters. My class 289 was supposed to be the last one to finish on quarters, but they ended up extending it a little bit. But that, uh, so I started in the, uh, the fall season of 86 the spring of 87 i believe and and um keep in mind i played rugby before they fully understood concussions so sometimes my time frames aren't exactly accurate but i'm pretty sure it was spring of 87 we literally were down to only 17 players total on the team and um it was tough because in those days they expected an a and a b game every week and um, so quite often we were almost every week we were playing two games and uh, there was a lot of disgruntled, uh, you know, players the, of the few that we had. The school looked at it all and said, you know, this looks like we should just cut this. And we all stepped up and said, no, you know, we love this. It's a it's helping us get through this curriculum, this tough, you know, uh, mental battle. It's it's a release for that. And um <clears throat> It was in the fall of 87, we played life in the final of the Battleship Invitational down in Mobile. And the old boys were down there because I believe there was an old boys um, big get together. And, uh, and, and life whipped us pretty good in that in that final. But Vicki Palmer was there. And at the end of that season, then at a banquet at her house, she said, we've decided to keep the program. And at the time... There was a total, I think, of eight full or eight full scholarships that were one went to the player coach and he was the full scholarship. The other um, seven were divided among the other 14 starting, uh, you know, lineup at half each. And at that meeting, she said, we've decided to up this to 15 full scholarships. And, um, you know, that didn't mean the starting lineup all got full scholarships, but it did allow 
for, you know, some, some of the guys that were, you know, up and coming to be put on scholarship, which kept, you know, kept them interested in the program and, and our turnout started going up and up. And, you know, by the time I finished uh, in spring of 89, we won the all Iowa tournament and beat the quad city Irish. Uh, and, and it was as if Palmer rugby had returned and you mentioned Dr. Piana. Um, he was there that day. Uh, quite a few of those guys that were there that day, Jay Hartley, um, you know, they were the up and comers and they took that ball and ran with it and, and put Palmer, you know, back to where then, like I say, the first time I met you is when the side made the, uh, the final four and we're playing out here in Glendale. Um, you know, Dr. Chad London is act- actually out here practicing now. He was on that squad. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I had a tough time that second year they were in the final four because I was treating, you know, I was a Glendale chiropractor and, um, they were playing Palmer and, and, uh, you know, I was, that was a tough deal for me emotionally. Uh, cause I knew how important it would be for Palmer to win. But in the end I told him, I got to go with the guys that I see bleed and sweating and, you know, every day. And that, that was the Glendale boys. So, um, but it was, it was my rock. It was, I went through a divorce, became a single dad while I was going to school at Palmer. Um, and rugby kept my, kept me, you know, engaged and, and kept me sane and um, probably kept me from developing a police record because I was able to, um, I was rewarded for throwing people on the ground and stepping on them as opposed to uh, when you do that at the bar, they don't like it as much. So, um, so yeah, rugby, rugby has saved me in many ways uh, over the years. And um, I think, I think Chelsea, I think my daughters can be interviewed with you here in another week or so. And, I think you'll hear her tell a similar story uh, about when her mother was ill and how rugby was, was something that she could count on. So, um, you know, it's been a huge part of my life and um, I'm so blessed and so thankful that I discovered it and that Palmer was there and um, that we were able to hold on in the tough times and, and, and and to see the kids now, you know, uh, appreciating that is is very uh, humbling and, and feels good. Yeah, that was my next question is, how have you seen this come full circle now from the dark ages um, when there were limited scholarships, talk of like stomping out the program to now we have 30 full scholarships yeah. and uh, now we have a thriving uh, man's and woman's team. Um, let's talk a little bit about like this, this like the, the success of this now. I think that that's a really cool thing to discuss. Well, and, you know, hats off to um, to Dr. Matt Walker and, you know, the guys that have, have made this happen. I, I can honestly say, sadly, I, I haven't been that involved. Um, uh, life threw a, a series of curveballs at me, and um, uh, I, I always have been one to take the, the more difficult approach for whatever reason. Um, uh, in 2010, I got back involved and learned of, of this growth. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's phenomenal, but it shows that, that never say die attitude, um, you know, and, and some of the old boys that help keep it going, they've drifted away now and gotten older. I did see you have Sinclair Warner scheduled to, to be one of your guests, uh, coming up as well. Great, great guy. I didn't play with him. He was just before my time. Um, but yeah, it's a premier program and, you know, I've seen plans, you know, architectural renderings of, the, the stadium and having been involved with Glendale, um, you know, and seeing the first true rugby stadium, um, you know, it, it's, it's so huge. We can, we can get that done. Um, you know, what that'll do for the school. And I don't know if the school fully understands all of that, but the rugby people, we certainly do. Um, you know, it just, it's just amazing. And, and the, the players that can bring in from, you know, from rugby playing nations, you know, I, I had teammates from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, um, and, uh, England, um, and, uh, their experience for the American players. Cause a lot of, a lot of the Palmer guys never played rugby before they got there, at least in my day. Um, and, and there were the ones that were out there for the money, for the, for the scholarship. And there were others that developed a true love of the game. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I, I never really doubted that it would go. Uh, I know there was, you know, talk of ending the program again because of the necessity to provide scholarships for both men and women. 
but that's when, you know, Dr. Walker and, and his cohort stepped up and, and said, no, this isn't going anywhere. And, um, you know, I did what I could do considering my circumstances, wrote letters, um, you know, and, and signed petitions and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud to, to be a part of it in whatever capacity I could. And the future, I, I hope to be a much bigger part of it. Yeah, and there's the things that you all you said everything in that that statement. There is there's time, talent, and treasure, and that's uh, one of the themes of these interviews that I'm doing. And that you have a journalistic background, you understand that thematic approach is uh, certainly important. Understanding that the I, I did an early close with uh, the symposium being April 13th and 14th back at the Fountainhead down, the Fountainhead back in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, there's a symposium now. Um, let's talk a little bit about the symposium and what what we're going to what's kind of involved with all that. I know there's going to be a guy. Is there a guys game and a girls game? Yeah, yeah. From my understanding, that's the plan. Um, this will so be my second symposium. I went to one year before last and couldn't make it last year. Um, awesome catching up with some old buddies. I hope to see a lot more of them there this year. Uh, when I went there, there was only a couple from my era. Um, well, now, uh, now, now I feel like an old buddy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, the, 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 the uh, continuing education, um, the opportunity to, to hear some of these people. I know um, sometimes the older guys, uh, you know, I, keeping in mind, I heard Dr. Vernon Pierce and, you know, some of these guys that, that are no longer with us speak. And um, sometimes the younger kids, they don't understand this, the craziness and the passion but that's how those guys, you know, survived. And, and passing some of that on to the younger people is, is extremely important. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, just, just like earlier off camera when we were talking, I was like, you know, I've had the opportunity to speak at um, all three fraternity houses on campus. I've had a chance to speak on campus there. And, you know, that's just the huge honor to me is having the support of Palmer as a whole. And, you know, that's... Uh, you know, the first school, I mean, how, how much of a blessing and a legacy is that something? I would that guy, guys are going to come back and say, I saw Jim Chester the first time he spoke at Palmer. And, you know, in 30 years from now, they're going to say that. And they're going to say, I saw when he came to the, 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 the pie house and he spoke between Fred Schofield and he spoke between um, uh, um, George Curry. You know, that, that's an honor to me because I know that what we're doing as a Cairo Hustle team and as a Cairo Hustle brand and as, a, you know, the, the, you know, the legacy, it, it's not just with the, the voice of the rugby players. It's not just with the voice of the chiropractors. It's with the voice of chiropractic. And I think that that's what we sometimes lose is we, we don't realize that what we're doing for the chiropractic profession is a global thing. We, we look at it as four will, four, the four walls of chiropractic. And as I was talking to you earlier, I want chiropractic to live outside the four walls of chiropractic to where we get this thing global. And, you know, the, the last comment here is from a chiropractor down in Mexico. I had the opportunity to go down and speak at two chiropractic schools two years ago down in Mexico and uh, show our film, which we had subtitled in Spanish. So now they have all of them that came to watch the premieres of those films, got a copy of the movie to where they can educate their friends and family and communities and clinics on the real chiropractic story. And that's just it, man. It's, 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 it's bigger than us. Oh, and absolutely. It's for humankind. You know, it's uh, in my opinion, it's, it's, you know, that vision that BJ had that, you know, taking it to the world. And he did the best that he could, which was incredible in his time and in, in era. And, uh, you know, now the tools like this right here is the possibilities are limitless and we will persevere. We will ruck over and, and we will be the common sense, uh, you know, healthcare of the future. Um, the, the drug industries, their, 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 their corruption is is becoming so evident. Their their time is, I think, limited, and um, they're scurrying around like uh, roaches when you flip the lights on, trying to be damage control. But um, people are too smart now, and the yeah. house the, the house of cards is falling. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm humbled, like I say, to be a. I feel like a pioneer. Uh, in, in that when I graduated, chiropractic wasn't even 100 years old yet. 
uh, you know, think about that. That is just a baby when you talk about something as, uh, you know, pan, you know, global as, as what chiropractic really is. And I love, you know, the connections I made with people from other countries. Uh, when I was at Palmer, there was a, a guy, Dr. Yozo Kawanishi uh, from Tokyo, who this is how small the world is. I'm at a, a chamber of commerce meeting in Denver back in the early 90s. And a, another chiropractor hands me his card and he has uh, some Asian characters on it. And I said, what, what is this? And he goes, oh, I speak Japanese. He said, in fact, that's how I became a chiropractor. I was over teaching English to Japanese children, hurt my back. They all said, you got to go see this guy. He was trained in America. He's the best in Japan. And he fixed me up and turned me on to chiropractic. I said, yeah, I knew a guy from Japan. His name was Yozo Kawanishi. And he goes, that was the guy. And so, <laughs> all those years later, you know, it's just, it's incredible. And, um, and, and fortunately, in a lot of these other countries, you mentioned Mexico, I don't know what big pharma's reach is in Mexico, but I know in a lot of countries, they don't have that kind of power they have here. So chiropractic has the potential to, to really grow in those places because it's not being suppressed uh, as much as it is, you know, regularly here. So, you know, well, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, share like a really deep story with you. It's pretty quick, but I was down there and I was showing the film down to one of those chiropractic schools. I'm not going to say which one, but I had a chance to uh, have a meeting with the president of that school. And we had a translator there because I don't speak Spanish and he didn't speak much English. So we were going back and forth. And uh, I said, just do me one favor. If you guys want to continue to call yourself a chiropractic college, uh, make sure that you keep the, the vernacular um, strict to keep retain innate intelligence and subluxation into it. Otherwise, don't call yourself a chiropractic school. Mm -hmm. And, and then, he, you know, what he said, he said, thank you for coming down here and telling me the truth. Thank you for coming down here and not selling me anything um, or trying to sway me to think the way you want me to think. And just coming down here and showing the film to the students. That's awesome, man. Yeah, bless you for doing that, too, Jim. That's, uh, you know, that's that's it's an honorable thing, man. Yeah, it's huge. And so. we don't we don't we don't oftentimes get the chance to live big. And when you do get a chance to live big and you get a chance to have one of those pivotal conversations, you should say what exactly needs to be heard. And that was, hey, keep subluxation in your vernacular and still keep uh, innate intelligence ripe within this curriculum. Otherwise, don't call yourself a chiropractic school. And BJ was beaming, beaming from above when you said that, right? And you never know how far reaching something you say or do today will affect the lives of millions of people tomorrow. So... And, and here we go. We got Bob Levine here. He goes, 80, 80s ruggers in the house. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tail end of the 80s for me. But yeah, it was uh, us in the, uh, uh, what do you call them? The flock of seagulls. I think that was a famous <laughs> band in the 80s, right? <laughs> cool deal. Well, 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 Dr. Well, Dr. Jeff, we're coming up on the edge of our uh, our interview today. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with our audience today? You know, not, not that I can think of right offhand. Um, I just, uh, I, I, I want to encourage, and they're probably not going to hear this unless I call them personally, but, you know, more guys from, from my era uh, to get involved. And, um, uh, you know, and, and I will, I am going to reach out to some of them and say, hey, you know, there's some good good momentum going here. Let's, let's come in and wreck, you know, wreck this thing up to the next level. And, um, uh, you know, just, I just, I, I thank you for having this passion and, and continuing on. Um, you know, I, I'm reminded when you said you're from Davenport, the, you know, chiropractic in the NFL, uh, Roger Craig, who grew up in Davenport and, and went to, I think, Aurora Central. I mean, uh, Davenport, Davenport Central. Central. Yeah. yeah, we went to the same school. high school. We yeah. walked the same streets, man. Yeah, yeah. And he he was instrumental in getting, you know, Dr. Athens uh, to, to work with, uh, the 49ers and, you know, the the results speak for themselves. And um, I know one of the guys I played with one season, uh, I believe Mike Zoli, uh, I was told he's the chiropractor for the Green Bay Packers. And um, so we need to, to somehow get these guys and because their circle of influence is, is massive. massive the people they've worked with. And, you know, uh, you know, he, he adjusts uh, Aaron Rodgers and, you know, Aaron Rodgers' dad is a chiropractor for that matter. I, I don't know if he's a Palmer grad or not, but, um, you know, 
Tom Brady swears by chiropractic. You know, there's just there's so many of these people that if we can we can touch them to just add their voice, uh, the credibility and the and the, the mo- momentum that will build would be huge. Well, you said BJ's whole thing is uh, you never know how far reaching what we do or say today will have the effect on millions of lives. And what my goal is to do is to bring chiropractic in my name and the word with the word of chiropractic household to a billion lives. So I, I'm looking to hit billions and there's eight billion people on planet Earth. And I want my footprint with my message and my momentum behind this beautiful profession to reach further than what anybody ever thought it could. And even the the fountainhead's uh, son, uh, BJ, like I know he had massive vision, but together I know that this profession has a massive vision. And if we don't hit the billions, then we're leaving all the money on the table. So we all have to, we all have to get out there and we all have to campaign. We all have to tell the story and we all have to band together to keep chiropractic pure and to keep it subluxation based and to keep on talking the tick of innate intelligence and keep on releasing the subluxation to let the body heal naturally. Amen, brother. That is exactly what I want to. Well, thanks for spending some time with me today, Dr. Jeff. I look forward to interviewing your daughter next week. And I look forward to having some fun with you guys back at Davenport and watching some good rugby and uh, having some brotherhood back there. And I uh, just keep on ticking, brother. All right. I look forward to it. Thanks. All right. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see you. Okay. Bye now. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.